Imagine you're on the road and someone speeds past you, cutting into your lane without indicating. What would you think of that driver? It's likely that you think, well, they're an idiot, a terrible driver who should not be behind a wheel. But imagine if you realized that that was actually someone you knew, maybe your best friend. In this case, you might start to think, well, something must be happening that's causing them to be in such a rush. Notice that the situation is exactly the same, yet the way we interpret it is totally different. In psychology, we call the inferences that we make about the behaviors of others or about what causes events attributions. There are many examples of attributions, but they can be broadly classified into two groups, dispositional or personal attributions, which are internal reasons like a person's mood or ability, or situational attributions, which are external reasons such as the environment or luck. So how can we use this framework to explain our thought experiment with the driver? Well, in the first scenario, we attributed the reckless driving to the person, probably a typical hoon. But in the second scenario, we assume that there must be an external reason why the person had to speed. Maybe it was an emergency. Dispositional attribution, situational attribution. So here's a question. Which of these two do you think we do more? The answer by far is this guy. So much so that it even gets its own name, the fundamental attribution error. That is, when people totally overestimate the dispositional factors in behavior and underestimate the situational factors. If I see a student doing something kind, like maybe holding a door open for me, well, I first assume they must be a good kid, and not because of something external, like another teacher telling them to do it. Likewise, if a student does something bad, like forgetting to bring their materials to school, I might automatically think that they're disorganized and irresponsible, and not that, you know, maybe someone else took their stuff by accident. The point here isn't about whether I'm right about my attribution, it's that we all tend to explain behavior using dispositional factors rather than situational. That's why we call it an error. In 1977, Lee Ross and colleagues conducted a study which randomly assigned participants to three roles, a game show host, contestants, and the audience. Participants were told that the game show host could design their own questions. After watching the show, the audience was asked to determine the intelligence of the people in the show, and they consistently attributed higher intelligence to the host, even though they knew that the host obviously knew the answers to their own questions, and that they had all been randomly assigned. This showed that the participants chose to rely on dispositional factors more strongly than the obvious situational factors. It's an incredible and quite alarming observation about us as humans. Now, how do you think we tend to interpret our own behavior in light of our problems with attributions? Not surprisingly, we find more errors there. Let's imagine this student has just received her results to the final psychology exam. Look at the difference in possible responses here. Psychologists such as Ross have noticed that as people, we're far more likely to attribute our success to dispositional factors such as being smart and our failures to situational factors, such as the exam not being well written. If your soccer team wins a game, it's because you guys played well. And if you lost, well, you know, it was bad luck or injuries or the ref. It's hard for us to acknowledge our flaws because that can damage our self-esteem. And the tendency to do this is called the self-serving bias. Speaking of biases, there are many of them, and they often stem from preconceived opinions or beliefs that we have that are hard to change. You can see more examples here. But the last thing we're going to focus on is a really deceptive but common bias called confirmation bias. That is a tendency to only listen to information that fits with what we already believe. Not only have you definitely seen this before, I can guarantee that you've done it. The confirmation bias suggests that we are selective with what we accept and remember. If I have a certain position on an issue like gun control, for example, I will tend to indulge in information that proves my point and try and reinterpret information that opposes it. If I believe that a certain diet is superior to others, you can be sure that I'll latch on to any evidence that confirms my belief. It's something that's so important for us to be aware of, especially when it concerns important issues. Scientists who fall prey to confirmation bias end up claiming to have proven theories that may not be supported by the full range of data. Well, if you've watched to the end of this video, thank you. I'm sure it's because you're an amazing, incredible person, and not at all because anyone was forcing you to. See you in another lesson.